Hi folks, so we're going to talk about backup levels, um, which is the idea that you just want to save the changes that have happened when you're doing backups rather than do a complete backup every single time. Um, and really the idea is quite simple, but the execution can be a bit complicated and fiddly uh, because of the different kinds of backups that you can have and the way that you're comparing them to each other. So I'm going to give some demos, I'm going to show you um, exactly how it works. And so by the end of this, it should be like quite clear um, the details of how all this stuff works. So with um, backups, you there are a number of different kinds of backups or levels of backup. There's a full backup or an epoch backup where you just copy everything. So you just get a complete copy of all the files. That's a full backup. You don't want to do that every time. So you might do a differential backup, which is where you just look at what's changed since you did that last full backup. Uh, and you might use something called delta encoding to just like save the differences in files, for example. Um, but differential backup is where you're just comparing to your full backup. Incremental backup is where you compare to all your previous backups. So if you've backed up at any point um, before, you can compare all of those and um, your new backup is um, the things that have changed since all of your backups, previous backups. And you can have a strategy where you do this in layers. So you might have a multi-level um, incremental backup where you do um, a full backup, for example, monthly. You could do a full backup of all of your files. And then you could have, a so that's level zero, you have level one backup, which is where you just save the changes since the last level zero backup. So, and that's your differential backup. So for example, each week, um, you have a fresh copy of the things that have changed since the start of the month. Um, and then you can have level two, which is where you save the changes since level one. Uh, so there's your incremental backup of, so you're not just comparing to a full backup, but your full backup plus your um, weekly backup. Um, and so you might do that uh, as a daily backup strategy. So let's let's look at what that actually looks like in terms of um, you know doing it. So <clears throat> what we'll do, we'll use our sync and um, we'll compare um, let's just see what we've got on our remote server. So um, so we're, we're just going to our, um, SSH in. Um, and we've got no files on the backup server at the moment. Um, if we don't specify a username with SSH, it defaults to trying my local username. So as long as I've got the same username on my remote server and my local server, I don't need to specify it. Um, so let's just start by making some directories on the remote server. So we'll make it rem um, so with SSH, if you can specify a command to run on the system, so let's do, um, we're going to make a remote directory, um, let's call it backups, um, and we will uh, also have a month directory. So what the dash p does is it tells it to create the um, all of the directories leading up to the one that you're trying to create. Uh, let's also create a day um, and uh, and a week. Directory. Okay, so now if we have a look at what's on there, uh, we can see we've got our backups directory. Um, and inside that, um, we will find our um,
So inside our backups directory, we've got a day, month, and week. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a full backup for the start of the month, and then we're going to save the um, in a differential backup for each week and an incremental backup for the day. So let's see what that looks like. So we can use the rsync command um, to copy files, and let's just copy our own home directory. Um, So we'll just copy our um, our whole home directory. We and if we depending on whether we include a slash at the end, our sync will treat the directory differently. So if we included the slash at the end, what it will do is copy the files that are in that directory directly into the directory we specify we want our backups to go. If we don't include the slash, it will copy the home directory name itself as a file as a file uh, as a as a directory. So within our backups directory, we'll end up with our username in there. And we Let's do that. So um, because then if we wanted to back up multiple users, for example, then we would be able to do that. Um, so to start with, um, we can just specify the, um, the, the server that we want to back up to. We can do it without a username um, because it has, we have the same username, but let's just um, keep it simple um, for the sake of uh, example and include our username, uh, the server name that we want to send it to, and then the directory path where we want to send it, and let's send it to our home directory on the remote server. Um, and into backups and we said we would use month and uh, let's say the first month for example so January so we're going to do a f so this is doing a backup um, and it's copying all of all of the local all the files in my home directory on this uh, system to my backup system um, in the backups for the month so now if we want to send the changes that have happened since then, so, well, let's create a change, I guess. So let's send a new file. Um, we'll call it new file um, and give it some content. And um, press Control-D to send the end of the file there. Um, so save it into, into that um, file. And now if we... Um, you know, the, the next month we could basically just do this again and it's just going to do a full backup. But instead what we want to do is um, have a weekly backup. So, all right. so let's, in order to do that, we have to tell rsync to compare des to the destination. So it's saying look on, so this is relative to the server that this command ends up being run on. So look at um, in the, my home directory in backups month one, um, and that way it will just save the changes that have happened, files that have changed since then. Uh, and we'll send it into week one. Oh, that wrong. What have I done? Ah. Compare dust equals. Um, okay, so now what it's done uh, is just save the changes that have changed since last time. Uh, I've used the, I've been copying and pasting since then, so there's there's a thing that's changed there. Um, but also, my new file has has copied across. Okay, so. Now, um, if we came, if it were when it was the following week, so let's create uh, another new file with some content, um, and we come to the following week. Because we're doing differential backups, uh, we're just going to basically change where we're sending it to. That's the only thing we're going to change because we want to look at our full backup. Uh, so just the things since the last full backup uh, into the following week. It simplifies our restoring um, files um, if we have 
if we're just comparing to the full backup. So let's have a look. So if we run that now, um, we'll see that both of those new files, because they've happened since the start of the month, um, uh, get copied to this week two thing. So now if we looked in um, week one, we just see the new file, and in week two we've got new file and new file two, because we're doing differentials, so everything that's happened since the last full backup. Now, within the week, we might want to have daily um, backups uh, that are incremental since, for the things that have changed since the start of the week. So the way that we could do that, um, if we create a third new file, um, then we, if we want to modify this command, to not only compare the destination to the monthly backup, but also um, to the, um, the weekly backup. So let's see. So we want to compare destination to this. So this is in month one, week two, uh, uh, day one. So this is the Monday of the second week of January. So when we run this command, um, so now we can see that in um, that what we have now is this new file uh, that exists in um, the in this for this day and then a second day might come along um, and we might let's make let's make things a bit more interesting so we've got a new file but also let's modify our um, file I don't know, file two I guess give that some content Save that. Uh, let's have a look what we've got here. So we've got oh, we've, sorry, and also let's. So I just created a new file called file two. Let's also modify <laughs> new file two uh, to give it some new content. Just change it slightly. So we've ended up with two new files, uh, one of which had existed previously, and we've modified it. So. Now when the um, the next day comes along, so if we're just on one day so far, day two, uh, we're still comparing to the start of the week um, and the full backup at, at the start of the month. So let's see. Um, and so you can see here now we've got the um, you know all the files that are new and have also changed since then. So. The, so that's one way you could do it, and that's with the multi-level backup that I just explained as being the three-level backup, so level zero, one, two, one, and two. And but if you're using incremental backup, you could actually choose to a different st strategy, which would be to compare every day. So you could actually enter this, and um, you you could basically compare. Um, Uh, like every day, and if we are, um, um, if you like, uh, you can use a wildcard. So you could say just compare every day backup that we have, um, and create the third day. So this way, when we're, um, you know, nothing's. I didn't change any files then since the last backup, and um, so so now if I created a new file, oh, I'll just do one without any content. So touch just creates a file, um, and we run that again and back up to the fourth day. You can see it just sends that one file, and um, that's changed. 
And so, so basically, what we're doing there is we've got. Um, so I'll just I'll just explain that last command. So we're doing rsync, um, and we're copying our home directory, and we're going to compare. Um, basically, where we're copying it to is the remote server, and with our, that's just the SSH details, so the IP address and username on that system. Where on the system we want to save the change. So in this case, we're sending sending it to day four. And we're only saving the things that have changed since our full backup, our di big differential backup at the start of the week, and then every day backup. So this is this one's doing an incremental backup where it's comparing incrementally to every previous backup, uh, daily backup as well, compared to what I did earlier, which was just to um, compare to the differentials on the full each time we do an incremental. So those are two different strategies you can use. Um, so you can see you can quite you know you could easily set this up on a um, you know write a short script that did this automatically so that you've got your backup sorted um, and obviously it's a good idea to be sending it to a remote server and not just saving it on your own system um, but you have to make sure that you know that server is secure and um, you know because you're putting all your backups there. Um, and all the you know other things that we've talked about in terms of backups and you need to think about. If you wanted to restore a file now, the way that you um, restore your backups, if you want to end up with a full backup of everything, how it's ended up being, is you restore the full backup and then each of the different and then the latest differential on top of that. Uh, you only have to do the latest because each of them are compared to the full backup anyway. So. You have the full backup, latest differential, and then you um, apply all of your incremental backups uh, in the order that they um, were done in order to actually end up with a restored system that has everything on it. If you were just looking for the newest version of a file, um, then you would basically start at the earliest date and work in the opposite direction until you find the file, and that will be the, the newest version. Or if you're looking for the oldest version of the file, you start by looking in your full backups, and then you look in your differential backup, and then you look through your incrementals. And the first time it appears, that's your oldest version. Um, so that is uh, incremental and differential backups explained. I hope that um, has made that a lot clearer. And um, yeah, I, thank you.